Hi guys, welcome back to another practical Rhino jewelry CAD tutorial. And this time we're going to be looking at pendant bales. I'm going to show you how to make a simple straight bale uh, in a teardrop or shield shape, which we're then going to deform or uh, transform using the cage edit command. And then from here, I'm going to show you how to create a more decorative fluted bale using the existing base shape as a starting point. And before we begin, I'd like to thank the Bespoke Jewelry Training Company for sponsoring this tutorial. The Bespoke Jewelry Training Company offers bespoke one-on-one -on -one courses online and in the studio of experienced jewellers, goldsmiths and other UK jewellery industry specialists. It offers tailored course content to all skill levels from industry professionals to enthusiastic jewellery makers. The first stage in making our simple bail, we're going to draw profile in the right view. So the first thing to draw is a circle which will represent the widest point of our bale or the, or the internal diameter of our bale I should say. So centre circle from the centre of my world 0, 0 0.0 with a diameter of three millimetres. Okay I generally find that three millimetres is a good average size as the uh, the jump rings or the clasps or end of a chain um, of most commercial chains anyway will fit through that that opening so that you don't need to remove them and salt them back on. However, the actual diameter will depend upon your design and the chain you use. So this is just um, for the purpose of this exercise and an average that I use. So um, now I want to turn this circle into a teardrop shape or a shield shape. And rather than drawing on top of this, we're just going to deform the circle. So let's turn the control points on by clicking the line. If that isn't turned on for you, you need, you need to click the line and then uh, click show object control points here. Um, and I want to move this point here so that it is two thirds more than the diameter of the circle. So from here to here, plus another two thirds. Now I could get my calculator out and work out what that is, but my mental arithmetic or my calculator isn't at hand. So we can use Rhino to work that out for us. So to do that, we're going to use a scale function. So first, I'm going to select the control point on the left of the line because we want to pull this out this way. Then go to Transform Scale 1D. My base point is here, which is the other side of the circle. And then rather than entering a reference point, we're going to use a scale factor. But I must make sure that my line is going to the left, not the right of this point, so to the left. Now note that I've got ortho on uh, down here, off of here, excuse me, to keep my line horizontal. And I, I normally have ortho on all the time. I only turn it off when I don't want it on or hold down shift to temporarily turn it, um, to take, disable it. So back to scaling. Um, so my scale factor is 1.666. So I press enter and see how that then moves the point exactly two thirds to the left. So I left click when I'm happy. And there we have instantly scaled this point so that it's two thirds of the diameter. So now we have a nice, smooth and very clean shield shape. And this represents the internal hole of our bale. So next I'm going to plan the outside limit of the bale or the thickest part in the side view. So we're just going to use the offset command to do that. That's the quickest way. Click my curve, type offset. And I want to make sure that my corner is set to sharp. That's my general offset that I use. Um, and then a distance of 1.2. Mine is already like that, so I don't need to change it really. And then I'm obviously going to choose the outside, not the inside, to tell it to offset outwards and left click. So let's turn this into a simple um, straight bail first. So I'm going to go into the top view, change my layer to green so the surfaces we create will be in a different layer. You don't have to do that, but I'm just going to do that so it's uh, easy to see what's what. Um, select my two lines, then simply go to solid, extrude planar curve, straight. Now make sure the solid up here and both sides are enabled. And if I want a bale that's three millimeters wide, I'm probably actually going to make it 3.1 so I've got a little bit of extra for cleanup on those side flat faces. So a quick way to do that as we're extruding from both sides rather than trying to work out what exactly half that distance is, is to type 3.1 and then divide it by 2. So I'll get half of 3.1 each side, giving me a total of 3.1. Enter. So now if we go into our perspective view 
and shaded, you can see that's created a nice simple teardrop or um, shield shaped bezel. So the next part um, of Irene's question was uh, about it could be developable. So this is why we started with this flat object. So to do that, I'm going to go into the top view and we're going to use cage edit to deform the shape. So let's copy this, control C and control V to paste it in. And then I'm just going to use my Alt, Shift and arrow key to note it to the left. So I've got a community of eight there, about eight millimeters away. So this is our straight one. So now let's do a curve bail. And we're going to use cage edit to do that. So I'm going to click my object, type in cage edit. I'm going to choose bounding box for a control object. The coordinate system is world. Enter. Now cage parameters, the default is XYZ 444 and the XYZ degrees of 333. So I want to change the number um, of points, so the point count in Y. Uh, y is north south, and I can tell that by looking at uh, the X uh, and Y axis indicated down here. So Y is up and down, or the green arrow. And I'm going to change Y to three points. This will also change the degree to two automatically. Press enter and enter again. And you can see that I've got one row at the top, one in the middle, and one at the bottom. Now, obviously, just to show you, we've still got four going in the direction, but we're going to scale just from the top. So to curve this, I'm going to drag a box around the top row like so. And using the gumball, which I've got turned on down here, if you haven't got turned on. So if it was you did this and it didn't come on, just click gumball down the bottom and this will turn it on. And I'm going to grab the red scale handle, which is the red box here on the left, and drag to the left. And you can see that it creates a nice curve here. I can continue to play with this by dragging the bottom row in. That's a taper it more. And I can keep doing this until I've got the shape that I want. Now, obviously, I can put in some lines to control the width. So now I'm going to, but for the purpose of this exercise, I'm just going to do it by eye. Now I've got this third row that I could also use to drag it out this way. So I could have it bowing in the center. So I can very easily and quickly deform this shape. But we just want a simple curve taper here. So let's bring this back out. This one back in a bit and again bring the center in until i've got something which is pleasing so i think that's quite a nice shape for me there maybe a little bit further out here here we go so i can press escape now to turn the um, control points off on the cage let's delete it because no number needed and there we have again a very simple curved bail now this is a curved taper but what if I wanted a straight taper so the sides were flat? Now I could just cut into this with a wire grip from the top, but it's worthwhile showing you how we can do it with cage edit. So back into the top view, I'm going to copy and paste this straight one in again, move it to the right with Alt Shift and my arrow key until it is on the other side. So we've got three at once. And then click, zoom in on it, cage edit again, bounding box world for coordinate system. Now we're going to change the numbers in Y again, this time down to two. Okay, so I just have one row at the top, one at the bottom, which you'll see. We'll enter as I press enter twice. And now you can see we've got one at the top. So excuse me, one row at the top, one row at the bottom. So now if I do the same thing and pull in with the scale handle, I get a straight taper. And again, we can pull these apart to change the severity of the taper. So we look at these all together. In perspective, delete this control box. We can see that from this single base shape, I can very easily and quickly develop it into these two alternative shapes. So let's look at refining one of these just to smooth it out and soften the edges a little bit. So let's go with the center one as it's already there. Delete the other two. Okay, so what I'd like to do is add a constant fillet to the inside edge 
and a variable fillet to the outside edges so that it starts with a bigger um, radius fillet here and tapers into a nice sharp point here. So to do that, obviously, the inside one's quite easy. We can just go to solid, fillet edge, fillet edge. I'm going to set an internal radius of 0.5. So where it says next radius, I'm going to change that to 0.5. Then edge to fillet. I've got this edge here and then the second edge there. And then shift either side at the same time. Then press enter and enter again to, to uh, add the radius. And there you can see we've got a nice soft internal edge. Now the outside, we can use the same command but by changing uh, the way that we use it. So same again, I'm going to repeat the command. I'm going to keep 0.5 here. So I'm going to click the edges anyway, like so. Press enter. And you can see it automatically just adds two handles here. So I want to add a handle here to dictate the radius at the back. I think actually I'll also add one here so it stays 0.5 here and then tapers out. So in the command bar with the command still running, I'm going to click add handle, keep the radius at 0.5, and where it says select new, uh, new fillet handle location, I'm going to snap with my quarter end snap at the back here, one here, and again in the opposite position here. Press uh, enter, so I finish adding handles. Now I want to remove the uh, fillet or radius information here. So to change these handles, you see we've got a little control point dot um, on each handle. So if I click that one, press zero, enter, it will remove it. And this one again, zero, enter. So now it should taper out from here to the endpoint and from here to the endpoint. So let's see if that works. And as you know, with fillets, it's a good idea to cross all your fingers and toes. And that worked great. So we've got a tapering fillet from the back up to the top and then out to the tip. Now I could just cut this in half and mirror it, but I want to show you another feature of the fillet command here. Um, now sometimes we've got shapes with lots of edges to fill in. Now this has only got one, two, three. Sometimes you've got a lot more and it can be a bit tiresome clicking around the edges to find um, the complete fillet uh, sort of edge. So if you run the command again, I'm just going to right click. So rather than immediately clicking on the edges, I'm going to click chain edges, uh, the option in the command bar up here. And it says select curve in chain. So I choose any, start with this one, and it automatically runs all the way around. And I press enter to say that that's the edge. And now the fillet information, because it's slightly different this time, it's automatically puts all those parts in. So I press enter again. And now it's back to how it was before. So again, add handle, 0.5, one here, one here, one here, enter. And then we remove the fillet information from here by clicking each in turn, pressing zero, enter. Yet again, left click, zero, enter. Check the previews right, so it will stay 0.5 here and taper out here and here. Enter again. And there we have the same thing on the other side. So we've got this nice sort of rolled edge. So now to address the third part of the student's question, which was a decorative bail. So we've done a simple bail, which we've then deformed. What if we want to turn this into more of a decorative bail? And I think what we'll do is a series of undulations, humps, grooves, whatever you want to call them, in here. So I have three, but running round and tapering out as it merges down to the bottom. Okay, so I guess it's this is more of the decorative uh, element of the bale. Now, rather than starting up from scratch, we can use this as our base point, and that's how I would normally do it anyway. So to make our life easier, let's cut this in half so we're only having to work on one half of the bale. So into the right view. And I'm just going to draw a straight line on a different layer so it contrasts. I'm going to show the view so you can see. Um, I'm going to use a single point line from the center of my world, which is 0, 0, which I've set up as F4. It's a keyboard shortcut. Choose both sides in the command bar. And then I've got ortho on, so my line stays perfectly horizontal. Left click, 
once the line passes through both sides cleanly let's turn my grid off with f7 just so you can see that click the line then press trim or i can do Control t and left click the bottom to remove and enter to finish now this line can go because you don't need it so we're just working with one half of the barrel okay so you can see the inside there is pink um what i want to do now is uh duplicate a few edges so that um, i know where i'm working to because we're going to actually remove the top surface and these fillets but i still want to maintain the same overall thickness so while on this red layer which i'm already on i'm going to use the dup edge command okay choose the bottom here and the bottom here and also these two radiuses or radii on the edge so enter okay and now we're going to remove these top three surfaces with the extract surface command so i'm going to type extract surface make sure copy is no so this this and this the top sort of three surfaces oh we've got some more here excuse me and these ones okay enter that separated them as you can see but i'm just going to delete them okay so now we're just going to rebuild this top surface on top of the inside and the sides but i want an undulating surface here so the first thing i'm going to do is draw a straight line from this end point here to here and i'm going to divide this line into three parts so click the line and then we're going to use the divide command so d i v i d e enter ask me for the number of lengths so i'm going to type three i've got split equals yes so it's split line to three and press enter so now you can see the line has been split into three equal parts if i turn my gumball off and select them with shift you can see we've got three equal parts okay so i'd like that to be the lowest point of the um the curve or the dip that we're going to add so just choosing one of them i'm going to use the arc command and then choose start point to change the way the arc command works so ask me for the start of the arc is end and the end and then i'm going to snap to the midpoint of this line here now I know that as this line was divided into three, I can simply transform copy from this point here to this point here, and the same onto the other side, give me three lines or three curves, or arcs rather that touch. And we can now remove the outside lines and the inside one, or excuse me, the three there that we split. And there we see we're starting to create the top profile for a decorative veil. Okay. And we've already got the cross section for the end because we want it to taper out flat here. So now onto the next part. First, I'm going to join these three curves together. So select them all, press the join button, or I can use Control J as the keyboard shortcut. And let's just have a quick look at those in the top view. So one thing that I might want to check is that the depth from the lowest point here to the inside hasn't become too thin because we'd hate for that to break through uh, in casting or finishing. So just to check that, I'm going to use the analyze distance command. Click here. I've got my perp snap on, which is this one here. O snap perp, so it finds the perpendicular point here. And it tells me that distance is 0.7 so that that's okay i wouldn't really want to go any less than about 0 0.6 so we're on the edge there um but one thing i am concerned about is that the distance between the peak and the trough is not enough so when that's cast and finished in the polishing we will lose the definition of this line so let's see what that currently is and let's use the dimension linear dimension command and i'm going to click the peak and then the trough and move my mouse to the left zoom out a bit we can see that's 0.5. I think I'd like about 0.7 really on there. So we can't make this any shallower, So, but we can make this taller. So let's remove that. Click our line. And if I drag a box around these control points, again, if your control points don't come on automatically when you click the line, you can turn them on. 
here with the point on uh, command. And I'm just going to use the keyboard nudge to move these up 0.2. So I hold down Alt and press the up arrow on my keyboard. And that will nudge them to, uh, excuse me, 0.2 of a millimeter up. And I can tell that by looking in the top that it's 0.2. So just to show you, if I um, dimension, linear dimension again from the peak and the trough, we're now at 0.7. So I've added a bit of extra thickness on there. And that's just something to be aware of. I might also actually bring the uh, curvature here out to the left a little bit on both sides. So it's not so much. Um, of a sharp angle here from the side. So again, control points on. I'm going to drag this point and this point. I select them both. Turn my gumball on. And then using the scale uh, anchor as we did before, or the scale box, drag out and you can see it's going the same on both sides until I've got something a little better. So I think I'm more happy with that now. That's better. Okay. So now that that's corrected, we need to create the top surface that flows around here from this undulating um, sort of profile to the flat profile at the end. So I think we're just going to use a sweep two to do that. So let's go to surface and sweep two rails. Let's do this on a different layer so you can see there's different in the surfaces. So my first rail is this one here. Ah, now you can see we've actually got a break in the um, in the rail here. So it doesn't always doesn't go all the way to the end. So let's back out of the command by pressing escape. We need to chain edges this time. So right click, click chain edges. It's a little bit like we did a moment ago with the fillet actually. Um, I'm going to click the first segment for first rail. So I'm going to click here and then the second one, enter. Now I can choose the next sections. So then it completes the rail for me without having to duplicate an edge and join, press enter. Cross section is this one, and then obviously to this one, and then press enter. And you can see there it generates from the undulation or the sort of puffed shape at the top out down into my flat surface here. Now, one thing to look at maybe maintain height. Let's see what difference that makes. Add a little bit of extra height on here as it tapers down. So I think I might have that actually. So I've got a bit more of a fuller shape here. So I'm happy with the preview, press OK. And now let's just join these two together. I'm just going to shift click them and use Control J. And we have the top part of our bale. And uh, let's also remove the curves at the end because they're not needed. So I'm just going to drag the box around, Control click the poly surface to remove it from the selection, then press delete. And finally, we're just going to mirror this shape in the side view. Again, I've got ortho on to help me keep that accurate. Join these two halves together. Control J once they're shift clicked. Shift clicked, excuse me, clicked. That's not a real word. Now it is now. Um, and there we have our finished shape. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, guys, and found it useful. Thanks again to the Spoke Jewelry Trading Company for sponsoring this video. If you'd like to see more content like this, be sure to follow me on Facebook and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you're interested in booking a bespoke online one-on-one -on -one CAD lesson with me, get in touch with myself or Dawn at the Bespoke Jewelry Training Company. And as usual, see you next time.